Hello everybody, I want to show you a new feature that we're adding to metrology.net that will allow you to do 17025 measurement uncertainty calculations using the same measurement uncertainty calculators as you use for your scope of accreditation in metrology.net whether you're doing a manual or an automated calibration. So let's start off by logging into metrology.net. As we log in it's going to move us into our work order page and we'll grab the 34450 that we're working on. Now the first thing we're going to want to do with this is we're going to want to change it to a manual calibration and then once we've changed it into a manual calibration we can expand out DC voltage or any one of the, uh, the test groups and we can see we've got some data points here that we need to collect. So we want to see can I do this work with a 5720? So I can do a check, it's going to calculate the measurement uncertainties for each one of the data points and it's going to give us a TAR, test accuracy ratio of 10 to 1. We can't do measurement uncertainty yet because we don't have repeatability and resolution and all the other things. So all we're doing is comparing the accuracy ratios between the two standards. So we can see we can do this with a 5720. So now let's say we want to check if we can do it with a 5520. So we do the same thing, hit check. And now you can see it's going to go back in and it's going to check all those measurement uncertainties and we're going to say 6.5 to 1 good enough to do this calibration. So now we can switch it into a manual entry and we're going to use this 5520 measurement uncertainty calculator. So now we click on the measured value, we type in 100.002, got a nice reading there. And you can see it calculated out now the TURs with the confidence and false accept values. If we get very close to the limit, say 100.025, so now we're right at the very edge of that limit, now we have a pass indeterminant, and we can see that it calculated out our 16 or 69% uh, confidence. So we're not really confident in that point. So now when we kick it out to the customer, we're going to call this a, we're either going to list our confidence value or we're going to call it a pass indeterminant. So now we want to see how we can run this calibration automated. So we'll kick off the manual entry mode and then we'll reach over here and kill our data points. So we just delete all of our data points. Now we're going to run this automated. So we click the run. As it comes up with our 5500, we can use the uncertainty calculations that are done inside of the driver or we can pick our customized uh, 5520 measurement uncertainties. So we'll go ahead and pick our customized uncertainties, hit run. And now you can see that we've queued that work. The workstation is now going to download those data points and start the calibration for us. So it comes up, it says the UUT is not set, so we'll select our unit under test. And we'll go ahead in here and say we want to do five measurements at each data point. We don't want to use a short because we have no zero points, but this use short what this does is if it's a zero point, it has us connect the short. If we don't use the short, then it will use the calibrator to generate the zero volts. So now we'll hit continue. It's going to reset the calibrator, reset the unit under test. Now we get our connection message, so let's go ahead and connect it up. So now that we have it uh, connected, we can hit continue. takes a few minutes for it to do uh, five measurements at each data point, but you can see now we've got 100.007 here. Now if we click in here and open our parameters, now we can see that we've got five measurements. We've got our standard deviation, we've got a repeatability, we've got our resolution. So all of that gets pushed into our measurement uncertainty calculator. And now we'll let it continue the calibration. And you can see that each data point, we're posting out our, our results. So if we were to lose power on this calibration, we're only going to lose the data point that we're working on. We don't lose any of the other data points. So also some additional features, we can go ahead and hit the halt button if we want to stop this calibration. It'll stop the calibration on the data that we're working on and move on to the next data point. We also have the ability in the UI that we can come in here and start looking at any other data points that we want to come in and look at. 
So the UI allows us to come in and look at the parts that we want to look at. So now expand this out, we should be done. So we've passed this calibration. So one of the things we believe that we want to do is let the technician be in charge of the calibration. So if there's a data point in here that he doesn't like, say this one volt range, we'll go ahead and delete this one volt range data point. And now up here, we've got what we're going to run. So you see how we're set to run only tested? We can choose all tests, untested, or failed data points. So this allows us to go back in and double check connections or do something to, to figure out why something's not running. So we didn't like this uh, one volt test point. We'll set it to only untested and we'll hit run this again. So and we're gonna go back through the same process. It's gonna ask us to configure the things for our workstation. So you can see here, we can set the UUT, set the number of readings, hit continue. It's gonna reset the equipment again. And now you watch this, it's gonna do just this one data point and then it's gonna get out of there. So now let's take a quick look at how we're doing measurement uncertainties in metrology.net. So up here we've got an uncertainties tab, so I'm going to click on this. And then we're going to search down the side for our 5520 DC voltage. So you see right here we have our 5520 source volts DC, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this is going to pull up a measurement uncertainty calculator that's built into metrology.net. And what you can see here is as I type in a value, say 55 volts, and I hit recalculate, it's going to calculate out my measurement uncertainty for 55 volts. And you see I can put in a repeatability and I've got a default resolution of 1e e to the 7th. So that, all that data in there came out of a spreadsheet. So you see here it's got 5520 DC volt XLS and then we've got our upload and our export. So here I've got that spreadsheet. So if we open up that spreadsheet and do the same thing, come in here and type in 55 volts, you see our measurement uncertainty up here changed to the same value. Now, this, this is just to show how we're doing it, not how to calculate measurement uncertainties. We share all of these spreadsheets out with customers. But you can see it's pretty standard in what we have in here. Here's our summary, and this becomes where we pull our results. So you can take any of your spreadsheets that you have put together that you're giving to your auditors for measurement uncertainty, you can take those spreadsheets and add this metrology.net tab and upload those into metrology.net. And it looks at this tab as the interface and all the things and how you calculate your measurement uncertainties is done with metrology.net behind the scenes. So you can upload those into metrology.net so that your measurement uncertainties coming out of your software is the same measurement uncertainty calculations that you're using with your scope of accreditation and your auditor. So now we'll jump back here real quick and you can see that when we edited this, we applied this to our test process source volts DC 5500. So now when we come back in here and look at our work order, you can see that this is a taxonomy of test process source volts DC. So when we set this into a manual calibration mode, it pulls all of those calculators we have associated with source, source volts DC and puts them in here. When we want to run the calibration, this is tying this measurement uncertainty to the source volts DC 5500 technique. So this allows us to get the automation very specifically tied to the measurement process that we're using inside of our software. So this is a few of the many features that we've put into metrology.net if you have any questions, comments, or would like to schedule a demo, please reach out, give me a holler. So email is mschwartz at calabsolutions.com. Phone number is 303-317-6670. And you can schedule a demo or get more information. Thanks.